There's a little more to it. I'm not just in charge of the books. I'm a scholar and study them too. Oh, you pompous bitch! No! Had I just been asked out by a dragon? Don't. I ignored his words and walked past him. Please, Jason, enlighten me. You and Reza came here on the same mission, and the situation has escalated beyond our expectations. What do you tell me now will determine the actions I'll take on this matter. It's not working. Are you joking again? No, really. It's not working. Wait, what is this? What's up everyone, welcome back to Angels at Scaly Wings, episode 7, where we previously left off from, well, getting a message that Anna is declared dead, and we were about to get thrown back into our own world, the human world, which was destroyed, and, well, we couldn't because the portal was sabotaged. Now, from the audio you could guess that I'm not in the museum. And the reason why is, well, I'm in school. Uh, and this is 18th of September, a Friday. So yeah, hell yeah. This is going to be much more fun. Uh, although, not exactly because there are people around me and I... And me speaking English and while others are speaking Latvian and doing their own thing. Like playing musical instruments like pianos or flutes or violins. And I should be playing trumpet right now, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Now, to the main thing. Let's get to the game because I don't want to ramble too much like I usually do. Now, I made my way back to the portal and arrived shortly after Bryce and Sebastian. Well, I can confirm that it's not turning on. Why are you so happy? God, I have never seen Bryce happy, like, like smiling. I've seen him like really fucking serious and now he's smiling. What? I told you that already. Just wanted to be sure. You really think it would still work with a chunk ripped out of it? Hey, I'm not an engineer. We don't know how the portal works. It was worth another try. There you are, Jason. What do you make of this? I'm afraid I don't know any more than you do. I'm not an engineer, either. In that case, we should start thinking about the who and when. There are patrols assigned... <clears throat> there are patrols assigned to the portal and surrounding area day and night. If someone tampered with the portal, they must have seen something. Today's day patrol didn't notice anything unusual though. I guess she just missed the part about the portal being vandalized. It'd be easy to overlook. It's a small part of the machine and it's not like she was expected to check every square inch of it with each lap around the area. What about the night patrol then? When I went over the reports this morning, I noticed the night patrol hadn't handed theirs in yet. And who was patrolling last night? Let me think for a minute. The schedule always goes in certain order, so last night would have been... Damn. What is it? The night patrol for last night would have been Maverick. I got wrapped up in all the recent chaos and forgot to find a replacement for him when he went on sick leave. Maybe Amira was right to take me off the case. So there was no night guard there at all. That's right. Whoever it was had an easy time doing whatever they wanted. Could it have been Maverick? If he knew no one was going to be here, he could have used that knowledge to his advantage. He couldn't have known that I'd forget to find a replacement, though. I don't usually slip up like this. What about Reza? Why would he have done it? He'd be, cut he'd be cutting off his only way out. No, he'd be doing something smart. If he has the part needed to get the portal working again, 
he's in control of who gets to use it. He's cutting off your ability to communicate with mankind. We wouldn't be able to inform them of Reza's actions. Maybe we shouldn't have kept the investigation secret for this long. If your theory is true, that would be proof that Reza's actions are his own, not humanity's. Hey, I already trust you on that. Or it's a stunt to grant humanity plausible deniability. No way. Things are too dire for the humans to take such an extraordinary risk, especially for that. I'm sure that wouldn't be the only reason they'd benefit, though. There must be something we're not aware of. Maybe we're looking at the... Maybe we're looking at this from the wrong angle. If no one was here to guard the portal, anyone could have broken it. It doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with Reza or, or Maverick. But they still have the greatest motives. Sure, but they definitely aren't the only ones to have one. There could be private groups who are interested in the technology or its significance as a human artifact. So that puts us exactly nowhere. At least as far as speculation is concerned, it's about time for forensics to show up anyway. Let's hope they can pull some clues from all this. Sebastian, can you take it from here? You've been just as dedicated to the case as I have. Since I'll have to be at the minister's side for a while, I'd like you to take charge of the investigation for now. Thanks, Chief. I won't let you down. What's up with that, anyway? Being appointed as Amera's bodyguard as punishment just seems strange to me. Are you kidding? I could have lost my job. This is a way better outcome. Honestly, she probably did it for her own sake more than anything else. But I'm not complaining. If that's all, I'm going to head back to the Ministry. I shouldn't keep her waiting. So what does that make you now? Temporary chief? More like case leader. By the way, you won't need to stick around while 4 and 6 does their job. Thanks for your help. I assume you can find your way back to your apartment. Yeah, of course. Alright, I'll see you later then. See you. I considered spending my free time roaming the town, but, this, but decided that it would be best to keep myself out of the spotlight. After cooking myself a rudimentary mirror, 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 mirror. <laughs> after cooking myself a rudimentary meal, I considered picking up another book when the doorbell rang. Who was that? Hey, Jason. Hey, Sebastian. Do you need my help again? We're just a small town police department, and with Bryce removed from the case, our resources are thinner than ever. I understand. So what do you have for me? First up is the primary witness of the latest murder, Damien, the victim's assistant. He was the one who found her body. A few things have changed since this morning, as we've gotten some additional information from forensics that warrants further questioning. I knew you knew. I know you knew the victim personally, so you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I'll leave the choice to you. You can find your assistant at the production facility. You seem too interested in that underground building found near the portal. I realized you might actually be able to help us with that. Since it's suspected to be of human origin, your opinion would be greatly appreciated. I guess you should add archaeologist to my resume. Maybe human matters consultant would be more appropriate. Do you really think it's okay for me to tamper with your priceless discoveries? Oh, you wouldn't actually go there in person. I just want you to take a look at the collected information in the archives and give us your opinion. Besides, no one is allowed to visit at the moment. The building is old and unstable and there is danger of it collapsing or flooding. Obviously, we don't want either of those to happen. 
flooding? Yes, the whole building is underground, and we've determined that there is a rather large pocket of water surrounding it. Any kind of disturbance could endanger everything and everyone inside. I see. We also located another witness from the latest murder. A store clerk reported seeing and hearing something, so it's probably worth it to ask him a few questions. Got it. Here are all the details. <laughs> details. <laughs> Visit me at the department once you're done. Sure thing. It was interesting that they still relied on me for their investigations, even after they tried to send me back to my world. I didn't expect them to allow me to help with police matters after everything that had happened. Now that the possibility of sending me back was eliminated, the advantages of having me on their side apparently overweighed the risks, though I had to wonder who would have to be more careful from now on. Now, what should I do? Uh, I could go to Anna's assistant. He possibly knows something. Uh, I could go to the archives and check the portal info. But I also could go and visit the store clerk because he heard something. Now... I think I should go to the protection facility, but I'm gonna save it here because just in case, you know? Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the protection facility first because I want to talk to her assistant because he possibly knows what happened to her. 12 minutes already and I have gotten this far. Wow. Hey, Jason. <laughs> hey, Lorem. Lorem, what are you doing here? I'm just fetching some equipment from my roommate. He's in the middle of an experiment and really needs his stuff. He sounded very emotional, which is very unusual of him. Sounds like it's serious. And you're here for important human business, I bet. Sure. By the way, how about I invite you to our place sometime? There's another thing you could help me with. What is it? I'd like to make some pictures of you. Oh yeah, here's the thing that I mentioned when I met with Metalorum the first time. This is the thing that happened back then and I somehow picked the wrong choice in the video that landed me right now. Like, hey, he, you could uh, come to my place and we could, I could take some pictures of you. Okay. I want to use them as references for the humans in my game. I see. Well, I can't promise anything right now, but I'll keep it in mind. Great. Thanks. I should really get going before my roommate blows up the apartment. Yeah, sure. Take care. You too. I made him sound optimistic. This should be the right place. Knock knock, who's there? FBI! <laughs> Holy shit, it looks good. Can I help you? Hello. You're Anna's assistant, right? Assistant? You must be joking. First off, I was never anyone's assistant. Secondly, the witch is dead, so even if I was, I would have moved up the corporate ladder by now. But you're Damien, aren't you? Yes. Where I come from, people usually introduce themselves before they start asking questions, though. You don't know who I am. <laughs> of course I know who you are. But that doesn't mean you don't need to learn some manners. Anyway, what do you want? Can I ask you a few questions? What about? Anna's murder. And who are you to go around asking questions like that? I'm working with the police on this matter. And I'm supposed to believe that? For all I know, you could be with the murderer 
and are just here to find out if you know something that could implicate you. Well, according to my information, you didn't particularly like the victim. Not only were you the last person to see her alive, but you were also the one who found her. As you may imagine, this warrants some questions. You know what? I don't have to listen to this. I don't know who you think you are, barging into my workplace and barking questions. Barking. But if you really are with the police, let them know that I won't say no more word on that matter without a lawyer. I wondered if Damien was a suspicious person in general, or if the rumors surrounding Reza were affected, affecting his perception of me. Before this, everyone I had talked to during my investigations had been rather cooperative. Before deciding to my, my next move, I returned to my apartment for a moment of rest. A small piece of paper had been slipped under my door while I was gone. Don't go to the portal, was all it, it said. I considered the possibility of a hidden message, but that was unlikely. The statement was blunt and quickly scrawled. Someone clearly, someone clearly didn't want me to go to the portal, but why would I go there if the, in the first place? As it was out of order right now, such an action would be serve no purpose. I looked outside the window at the portal's faint silhouette in the distance. The paper rustled between my fingers as I fidgeted with it. Wondering about, wondering about the message sender and significance. My train of thought was violently interrupted by a sharp burst of gunfire, echoing from the portal. I had to think fast. The gunshots ensued Reza's involvement. He was at the portal. The question was, why? If, the, if it was his attempt to flee back to the human world, he would receive a rather unpleasant surprise the moment he would try to use the portal. Or maybe Sebastian's theory was correct and Reza held the part needed to repair the portal, in which case his escape could be imminent. The gunshots themselves were another question. Was someone trying to stop him? The police patrol may have seen him, and he may have been taken by surprise. This could be another murder in progress. But all of, this mur but all of his murders were committed with a sharp weapon before now, not a gun. He didn't want to be heard. Besides, it was only early evening, and the town was still bustling. If Reza wanted to stay hidden, he was going he was doing a rather poor job at it. Of course, there was also a, the possibility that he wanted to be heard, but who would he want to attract? The police? Maverick? It could easily be a trap for those hunting him, and that technically include, included me, though I wasn't sure if he knew of my involvement in the investigation. It was also a very real possibility that he knew my apartment was close enough to the portal to hear a gunshot. Could it be a signal for me? Regardless, the words I held in my hands were unmistakable. Don't go to the portal. What should I do? Ah, fuck it. Save it. Empty slot. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Fuck the note, I'm gonna rush there. The path I took was a familiar one by now. Even with night falling, it was easy for me to find my way around. Long, grotesque shadows stretched before me, and the atmosphere was eerie and dangerous. I couldn't tell if it was because of the evening shroud of darkness, or if the urgent situation tugging at my mind was twisted my... If my mind had twisted my perception, I should learn how to read. <laughs> I made it past the village border and pressed dawn. There was still a fair distance to go. Suddenly, glowed hands, gloved hands grabbed me from behind, clamping over my mouth. I couldn't make a sound. From what I could see, it was that the same hooded figure I had met in the maintenance room after the second murder. It's too late. Maverick arrived before you did, and he'll make sure that no one uses the portal today. Don't follow me. I was shoved to the ground and before I could regain my composure, the figure vanished into the darkness. If Maverick was still in the area, if Maverick was still in the area, it was not a good idea to stay here. I wouldn't want to feel his suspicions or worse. I figured it was the time to go back to the police department anyway.
I'm reckless. I tried to go to the portal. That is what I'm gonna do because fuck my life. I'm gonna do everything to stop him. <laughs> yep. Before I'm gonna continue, here's a funny thing about me. You know everyone has this self-preservation thing? Like, you're gonna do whatever you can to keep yourself alive as long as you can? Yeah, mine is a roller coaster. Like, at the top, it's like, okay, I'm gonna keep myself as alive as I can, as alive as long as I can. And it goes down to, okay, I'm gonna sacrifice myself for people I know, like family and really close friends. And then it goes down even lower and goes, you know what? If I die, I won't die alone. And then it goes up and then down. <laughs> it just happens in random. It happens especially in some kind of games where it's like, okay, either I go do this or I I commit a martyrdom. <laughs> Drop a live grenade when killed. <laughs> okay, let's get to the back of the game. There you are, Jason. It seems to me you've taken a lot a liking to Bryce's chair. Maybe. I could get used to this. Don't tell Bryce, though. By the way, we have evidence that Reza visited the portal today. Someone reported loud bangs consistent with what we know about his weapon. We didn't manage to catch him, but I wonder if this stunt means he's getting desperate. Who knows? Now, Let's take a look at what you've got for me. Hmm, this isn't much information to go on, but who knows when it, co when it could come in handy. I do what I can. I know, and your help is greatly appreciated, believe me. Especially since we are so short on staff right now. That will be all for today. I'll contact you if we need anything. Of course. See you next time. See you. Okay. This is possibly the third. Finally a free day. What should they do? It looks like there are some messages on the answering machine. Let's see. Hello, this is Remy speaking. I'm calling in regards to the dinner we talked about. I'll have an opening soon and was wondering if you also had the time. Let me know if you are interested. Have a good day. I guess that's my official invitation. Now the question is if I want to go or not. Now, uh, hello, nope, status, wait. Oh, that scared the living fuck out of me. <laughs> okay, I, I was afraid, okay, that, oh, so. I'm gonna go with Remy, Remy again, because uh, I don't know why. Now. We have Bravery, Order the Daily Special. I haven't done that. Refuse to help Bryce in the time. 99! Do well on the first in the investigation. F that up. Re reject Bryce's invitation. Answer Anna's question correctly. Eh, I fucked that up. Wait for me until you get bored. Yeah, I could be patient. Why skip frames? Your winner beats Sebastian at his own game. Interrogate Damien. Okay, I could have interrogated, but I have, didn't do it. You look at Anna's envelope. Look at Remy's pictures. Is there a third investigation? Like, do well on the third investigation. Yeah, I possibly fucked this one up. Find a mysterious base. Play a prank on by Bryce. Help Katsuharu. Who is he? Or she, I don't know. Follow Wara. I don't know either of those. Okay. Now, I got a message from Remy and I'm gonna go with Remy. Thank you again for helping me the other day. Without you, I wouldn't have been trapped sorting books for a few more hours. Inviting you over for dinner is the least that I can do. What do you mean skip frames detected 15% over last 2 minutes 2 minutes ago? <laughs> it's no problem really. It really is. 
There's something else you could do for me. <laughs> Look at this potato. <laughs> no, it's no problem, really. Besides, I'm also here to learn more about your kind. Spending some time of the, spending some time in the library is one, is only appropriate. Damn it, I, I, I misspec. <laughs> well, my gratitude is yours, regardless. Anyways, is there anything else in particular you would like to eat? <laughs> anything will do. How about steak? I could, you know, I could go for some meat right now. Meat. <laughs> <laughs> do you have it something which damn it? Uh, not anything will do. I happen to have some nice steaks left. How does that sound? Skipped frames I think 54% what the fuck do you mean? There's zero This might take a while so make yourself at home With those words Remy walked into the partially walked off walled off kitchen Yeah walked off yeah sure why not There was no door so I saw him open the fridge and take out two steaks before he set them on the counter soon after he was already preparing the various ingredients with his somewhat clumsy paws. He was silent for a moment, then lifted his snout and looked at me from over the par partition. What is it? Uh, I was just thinking about something. I could help cook, if you like. Don't worry about it. Alright. I looked around the apartment as Remy cooked and couldn't help but notice the almost mesmerizing tidiness that permitted the place. Shelves were filled with books, scrolls, magazines, and other various trinkets. Suddenly, the repetitious noise of vegetables being cut ceased as Remy turned from the adjoining room. I'll be back in just a minute. He went down the hall and vanished through the bathroom door. What should I do? Uh, I could wait. Escape while you still can. <laughs> oh. Oh no. You know what? The, the uh, I could do some meat uh, comment. Uh, yeah. I sure don't think that someone could put some kind I sure <laughs> I sure hope someone didn't make a not say for work hard work of Remy or something or any other dragon and put them on E621 <laughs> Now uh, I'm gonna look at the pictures because why not? I picked up one of the framed photos to examine in more closely. I picked up one of the framed photos to examine it more closely. It was a red dragon. I guess that it was a female of young adult or college age, though I wasn't sure as it was still hard to tell without looking at the obvious signs. Her crimson scaled head was adorned with frills that ran down her, the back of her neck. She she wasn't familiar to me. Wait. That description was oddly close enough to Anna. I'm gonna look at the pictures again. The second picture showed Remy in his typical attire. Tie, glasses and all. The last of the three Tree, yeah. The last of the three pictures was of another red dragon who, as far as I could tell, was a fairly young member of its species. It reminded, it reminded me of a younger version of Remy, although without his typical accessories. Yeah, I looked at his pictures. The bathroom door opened and revealed the white dragon. As he approached, I felt my stomach grumbled quietly. I barely heard the muffled sound, but when I saw Remy's ears perk, 
I realized he had more sensitive ears than I expected. Hungry already, I take it. Why you lift? What? <laughs> I'm so empty. I suppose so. Although your stomach already answered that question for you. <laughs> After entering the kitchen, once more, I saw the dragon looked over the kitchen partition again. Partition again. His mouth opened a little, as though he were going to speak, but his brow scrunched with hesitation. Before I could say anything, he shook his head and continued to cook. Soon I heard the sizzling of the frying meat as the delicious smell of steak raffled into the room. Fueled by its fragmented odor, I slowly lost myself to daydreams as I closed my eyes. Uh, is something wrong? You are salivating. Uh, it's, it's nothing. I was just thinking about something. Well, the food is ready. Enjoy. I looked down and saw that, that a plate was already in front of me, piled with steak and vegetables. Remy was already eating, so I took the knife he had provided and cut off a small corner of my steak. Then I pierced it with a fork and it, its three prongs penetrating the flesh on her ledge tingly. Slowly I raised it to my mouth and my tongue glided over the bare substance briefly as it tinted my lips. What? Why describe it that? detail -y. I took the first bite, a delicately crisp exterior, with a much softer and juicy inside. It melted on my tongue like a butter as the taste spread to even the remotest corner of my mouth. It was almost perfect. So, what were you thinking about? Huh? <laughs> Remy's words snapped me back to reality. You said you were thinking about something. Uh, do you live here by yourself? I was thinking about those recent murders. What? No. Why would the smell of burning... Why? Would the, what would the smell of cooking meat remind me of murders? I met Amara recently. Why did you use a stove to cook? I met Amara recently. Ah, uh, fuck it. I'm going to save it again. <laughs> Now, uh, save here. Uh, nothing in particular. Anyways, how do you like the food? <laughs> I would marry this steak if I could. <laughs> Seeing how it's already half gone, I don't think that this marriage would last particularly long. Mention that you saw with him with Anna. I'm gonna mention that. By the way, I noticed you went to see Anna the other day. What was that all about? How do you know about that? I saw you two together a little before you left the building. That's kind of a long story. Why were you at the facility in the first place? She said I could come by. Apparently she wants to run some tests on me. Oh, that is so typical of her. Let me tell you something. That woman is trouble. Big trouble. Oh no! He probably doesn't know that Anna is dead. A few years ago, she was discovered performing unapproved and therefore illegal experiments. She had been running them for a while under the assumption that she would be allowed to, but in the end, our council's ethics committee had a decision against her. Anna's defense was that she did it for the greater good, and that she was confident that her experience would be approved eventually. She lambasted us for not allowing her research and said our decision was short-sighted and stifling innovation. In the end, no proof of any actual wrongdoing could be found, so she basically got off scot-free. Since then, she remained under the radar. Until now, there are rumors going around about Hannah. Surprise, surprise. Her latest application involves human DNA. 
a casual disregard for rules of any kind should tell you what kind of person she is. She does have a brilliant mind, you know, but the way she uses it. She's manipulative, arrogant, abusive. I don't think you should trust her. Maybe she isn't as bad as you say. You don't know her, nor should you bother getting to know her. How much do you really know about Anna? Is it your job to go knocking on pe people's doors just because you heard some rumors? I was just trying to help. Really? It sounds like all you did was harass her, without proof of any actual wrongdoing. That's not a particularly good idea. Well, I... Well, if that's what you think, then I just hope you at least be careful around her. I can't be around her! Oh no! Bless your innocent heart! You don't know! Oh no! Soon both of our plates were picked clean. I guess I judged your portion correctly. Unless you want more. I'm good, thanks. That was an interesting steak. What kind of meat was that? Those were Auroch steaks. Are you familiar with that animal? I may have heard of Arochsen before. Arochsen? I don't know what it is. They are rather large bo bovine mammals characterized by their horns and body shape. We get a range of products from them, from meat and milk to sub-products like butter and cheese, in addition to leather, felt, oils and creams. We even use their horns and bones for a variety of things. That sounds similar to an animal we have back at home. Speaking of unfamiliar creatures, why don't you tell me more about your species? Are you referring to me or all of us? Our society is comprised of a number of different species, which you have probably noticed by now. I guess all of you. Let's just start with the basics. I'm sure you're aware, but unlike the mam mammalian aurochs, we are reptiles. Though this makes me wonder about you. Based on your fur, I guess that you are a mammal, but you're very different from other mammals we know. It's the same vein. You don't share many characteristics with our reptiles back home. And by the way, we don't have fur, but hair. What's the difference? Uh, I don't know. Keeps going. Fur has a set length it will grow. There as hair will keep growing, so we regularly cut it. Is that so? Interesting. I was wondering something. Are you wearing all those coverings to make up for a lack of hair? I suppose that's one reason why humans wear clothes. They also provide warmth and protection, and are used to differ differentiate us from one another. Sometimes uniforms are used as Id identification, other times clothes are just ornamental. What a person wears can tell us something about the person itself. That sounds complicated. We also have uniforms and wear some things for ornamental reasons, though our uses, uh, uses aren't quite as extensive. That brings up an interesting question. Are you endo or exothermic? We produce our own body heat. That is unusual. Where I come from, all reptiles are exotherm exothermic. Unless you count birds as reptiles, I guess. But none of your reptiles are sentient, correct? Maybe it has something to do with our, our different brain structure. Maybe. Now that you've been in our world for a while, what? how do you like it here? I like the people, I like the landscape, I like the people. That is good to hear. Cultural differences can make things very difficult sometimes, even within the same species. I'm glad things are working out for you so far. Oh, I just remembered. I was able to save my game after all. Your interference was only a minor setback. Okay, glad to hear it. Good job, Remy. You're awesome! <laughs> I have to say with all the time. <laughs> I just don't want to fuck it up. Okay. I, I... 
it turned out it wasn't a big deal after all. You know, if that hadn't worked out so well, I would have had to consider making you play up to that point again for me. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Ain't, Ain't nobody, nobody got, got time, time for that. that. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. I wouldn't mind playing some of your video games. Is that so? Yeah, they're fun. I'd like to see what kinds of games you have here. I'll keep that in mind. Perhaps I can show you some time. You know, I'm glad you're here. Since you arrived in our world, we haven't really had the chance to just sit down and talk. I didn't know you wanted to chat. I'm usually not the sit down and talk kind of either. I agree. It's been a busy time for me, as you can imagine. Oh, of course. Thanks for talking to taking the time to pay me a visit. I always have so many things to take care of that it's hard for me to find the time to do something simple like this. At least that worked out this time. You do have a point though. I don't really know what much I don't really know that much about you. I know where you work, but most of our conversations so far have revolved revolved around things other than you and me. Why don't you tell me why don't you tell me more about yourself? Uh, I don't really like talking about myself. Why not? I guess I wouldn't know what to say. I'm not really that interesting. I don't believe you. There's also that uncertainty of not knowing how another person will react to something I say. I don't want to embarrass myself. Hey, at least you told me that. That's something. I suppose. Anyway, now that you've seen my apartment, I'm wondering what your home on the other side of the portal looks like. It's nothing special. Yours is prettier. Actually, everything here looks nice in comparison to back home. Is that so? In some ways, I'm not really looking forward to returning, but it's not like I have any choice in that matter. I suppose you could always visit if you wanted to. It wouldn't be that easy, I'm afraid. There, are, there was an extensive process involved for selecting who would go through the portal, and it was only one of many applicants. And I was still one of many applicants. I'm still surprised that I ended up being chosen. At least you're here now. Indeed. So what have you been up to since the last time I saw you? You mean since I went into the kitchen to cook the steaks? <laughs> Very funny. I'm just messing with you, Jason. Ah, uh, with all that talking, I totally forgot about dessert. Would it happen to be a cream uh, with a cherry on top? <laughs> I'm up for some dessert. Then I have just the right thing for you. I'll be just a minute. He neatly stacked our dishes before he took them into the into one of his four piles and went back into the kitchen using his other three limbs. I couldn't help but think that it looked pretty awkward. When he returned balancing a plate with a rather attractive cake slice in a similar manner, I realized he would have to make multiple trips to carry everything to the table. Uh, ask him if he needs help. Do you need any help for that? Don't worry about it, I can handle it. You're my guest after all. Once he placed the first cakes, cake slice on the table... Yeah. Once he placed the first cake slice on the table, he went back to the fetch the others. When he approached the table at the second time though, one of the tiny dessert's forks started to slip off the table plate. Remy reached his free forepaw in his attempt to save it, but lost balance without its support and fell over. In an instant, the plate, fork and cake slice flew through the air. The dish and silverware clattered as the pristine cake crumbled into a sad heap of the, on the floor. No! Remy, Remy, don't! <laughs> no! Uh, I hate that my mind is not innocent. 
Oh no. <laughs> okay. But you know what? I actually really love the artwork. It looks amazing. For a few moments there was a silent for a few moments there was silence as Remy and I looked at the result of his blunder. I'm sorry, Jason. <laughs> That's fine, I'll just eat your slice instead. <laughs> You'll need to apologize. This isn't just about you and your cake. This always happens to me. No matter how hard I try. You have proper hands, so do some of the others. You have proper hands, so do some of the other species. How can someone like me even be a librarian? Not a day goes by without me dropping a scroll and unfurling it across the room. But the customers don't care or pity me too much to say anything. It's a common sight for them after all. Is this about the mirror, isn't it? I guess it is. I just don't see why someone like me got to be a librarian where there were others more qualified for the position or who were at least capable of not dropping the inventory on a daily basis. She makes fun of you for it. I knew it. I mean, why else would she have me do these tasks all the time? Sorting books, carrying things from one place to another. I shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't work somewhere where my worth is only in the entertainment I provide. Why don't you look for a new job? These positions have terms, similar to those of ministers. If I ended my employment prematurely, it wouldn't look great. How long do you have left? A while. <laughs> you should resign. Consequences be damned. Can't you report her to the superior or something? Uh. Fuck it, I'm gonna ask it. Not really. It's not like I could prove anything. Her public and her private demeanor are two very different things. And it would be my word against hers. I just wanted to have a nice evening with you. And now it ended up like this. I shouldn't have brought that up. Don't worry about it. I still think it was a nice evening. Maybe I should stop being such a so surplus then. I can help you clean up. Thank you, Jason. We cleaned up together and by then he seemed to be in higher spirits. Afterwards, we said our goodbyes and I left, not sure what to think. <laughs> Looks like I have some free time today. Uh, status. Ah, I didn't do it perfectly. I did it good. Okay, you know what? Never mind. This is the thing. Why do I have this? Why? Why? Why do I have this? Why do I have this? <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Uh, what last thing? Last meeting. I'm gonna meet with Lorem again because he wanted me to meet him. And let's do this then. <laughs> there you are. Come in. Sure. Honestly, I can't believe you agreed to do this again. Don't mention it. Now that I had a chance to work through everything from the last time, we can do some real work. Sounds great. I did a staggering amount of research on my mythical humans. Here, let me show you some of the stuff I found. Sure. We sat down at the coffee table, Warren opened up a laptop and started to type away. See? Seeing the laptop brought back memories. In our world, they had become obsolete a long time ago. Before I show you these images, I should probably tell you that some of these are really weird. Just don't take them the wrong way. You already, to you already told me about the four-headed human, so I think I can handle this. 
All right. What the fuck? It looks like a mole human. The mole man. <laughs> he looks friendly. <laughs> this one is supposed to be one of your ancestors. Ancestors? Well, it does remind me of some of the dragons I've seen here, but I'm not sure what humans have to do with this. You remember the myth about our creator turning into a dragon, right? Yeah. Now, here is an interesting question. What species did that human turn into? There are a number of dragon species nowadays that aren't genetically, genetically compatible with each other. Did the human chose one of them? Did they, perhaps, procreate? A shared ancestor is one option. This would mean that the different species split after the human's involvement in our creation. If human DNA was involved in some way, that might explain how our different species came to be. Take a far ancestor of yours and apply various amounts of the human DNA. The result would be a number of different species, each with a different amount of resemblance to humans. Interesting. <laughs> now, it has been said that an upright stance and being able to walk on two legs is a more human trait. Most humans walk on two legs, so that's true. In any case, it's one of the things that makes humans unique. As a result, some people believe that certain species share more traits with humans than others. They think, I may... they think it makes them more noble or something. Luckily, this doesn't happen often. You can walk on two legs as well, right? Sure. In this theory of shared... In this theory of shared human DNA... <laughs> I can't take this seriously. It was funny. The whole week I felt like shit. Like, I felt like I couldn't think. It was like my head was either... It, I felt like my head was either under water the whole time or inside honey all the time. So yeah, interesting point. Now, sure, in this theory of shared human DNA, this puts me somewhere in the middle, since I still have wings and horns. I can see that. Here, look at this one. The, uh, that looks... That looks like a goblin trying to mask itself in a ghillie suit. Or it looks like a... Like a uh, changeling trying to change its face into a fucking goblin. <laughs> and by changing, I'm talking about the D&D &D type, not the... Uh, oh, look at me, I believe in some fairies. <laughs> I wouldn't want to live in the same town as this fellow. I'm not sure if this is much closer than the previous one. What's with the little horns? Since we don't know what the original human looked like, we can't exactly define which traits separates us from them. As a result... Our inter interpretations of humans can vary very wildly. I'm not sure he's a particularly friendly one, though. Actually, I think this is supposed to be a human female. What? It looks like a goblin. Interesting. There are some that don't think humans are friendly at all, though. Really. So far, I've only heard positive things about this. Some interpretations of our myths doesn't exactly paint you in the best light. There are some people who oppose the idea of human worship and that their involvement has meant for us. In that way? Or in what way? To, yeah, in what way? They say that human interference was unnatural and that we need to get back to our roots. And how do you think they can do that? Apparently, it means refusing to use modern technology and living in caves, or the wild <laughs> wilderness again, like an animal. Pretty much. Most of us think those people are crazy, though. As long as they aren't hurting anyone. They're harmless, really. You probably won't see one of them around here anyway. This is an interesting style, though. Do you know how these pictures were made? No. I'm sure that information was provided when I looked them up in the library, but I didn't copy all of that. 
and you're using these as references. I make do what I can get. Maybe now you can see why I wanted your help though. Alright, what do you need me to do? I just want to make some quick sketches. You can stand over there by the wall. Okay, I can certainly do that. I walked up to the spot he in indicated. When I took my place, I saw that he had laid out a number of pens, papers and other art supplies on the table. Oh, this is going to take a while, isn't it? I'll try to be quick about it. Don't you want me to strike a pose or something? A tea pose would be good to get started. What's that? Just point your arms sideways, so you look like a giant T. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna T pose, I'm gonna assert dominance. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, I get it. Raising my arms to the sides, I wondered how long this would take. Great, now try to stay as still as possible. I already regret this. Can I still talk? Sure, as long as you don't talk with your arms. As I wasn't allowed to move my head, I stared at Lorem sketching my figure. This went on for a few minutes until I suddenly heard the sound of a door opening. Oh hi! He looks confused. I would also be if I suddenly just someone just fucking deposed on me. <laughs> hey Lorem. Oh, right. The human was going to visit today. I totally forgot about that. You don't mind if I take a seat, right? You just want to study Jason. <laughs> like, you weren't doing that right now. Besides, this room is mine as much as it's yours. I'll just watch and be quiet. I thought you had experience to run. And they are running. I'd rather not be conflicted to my tiny room for the next two hours staring at the ceiling and waiting for them to finish. But no experience on Jason. <laughs> yes, I'll just sit here and maybe take a few notes. I'm sorry, Jason. This is my roommate and longtime best friend, Ipsum. <laughs> what the fuck is the names? <laughs> nice to meet you, Ipsum. What? What is a name? I'm confused. I mean, cool name, but at the same time, what? The... Fuck. <laughs> His scientific bluntness may be off-putting, so please bear with him. Speak for yourself. So much for those two being two best friends. Lorem returned to his drawing, the silence only being interrupted by the strokes of his pen. Ah, oh, by the way, have you seen my examen sphere recently? Didn't you take it with you when we went to the park the other day? Yes, I did. Well, that's the last time I saw it. I must have lost it then. I already searched the whole apartment. Did you go in my room? No. Maybe someone found it. Oh, wait. I just... Wait. Hold on a second. Achievements. Uh, where was it? Second, second investigation... Yeah, here it is. Orb finder. Find the mysterious orb. I could have found his uh, examen sphere. <laughs> I, had it I had it registered in my name when I got it, so if anyone found it, it should show up sooner or later. What is an examen sphere, anyway? It's just a glorified toy for grown-ups, really. You have no idea what you are talking about. An examen sphere is a very sophisticated tool with a countless number of uses. Like what? It can levitate and follow you around, take photos, you can even use it as a calculator, making it a glorified toy from grown-ups. <laughs> it's literally a drone, but advanced. I use it for my experiments. Well, if they can take photos, I wouldn't need to stand around like this. Uh, that is, if we had it here now. It is a great companion for all situations in life. It's much easier to draw a form of live model than a photo, though. Easier for you, maybe. I hope this doesn't take much longer, because my arms have went numb a while ago. <laughs> yeah, I think you can relax for now. I'm nearly done with this one. A tingling sensation went up my arms as I relaxed. Slowly, I began to regain feeling in them. Alright, 
Now turn around. I thought we were done already. Not unless we want our human to lack a backside. So that's what this is all about. Uh, you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. Is this my turn to draw you now? That's not how it works. I wouldn't mind getting a portrait of myself. I can already see it. The light shining from above. Caressing my luscious mane. Highlighting each lock as they interplay. <laughs> this is going to be a long day. That depends on how fast you are. What? <laughs> okay, I'm having too much fun that I, my brain is not even focusing or fucking functioning. I mean, what am I talking about? It hasn't functioned properly since the start of this week. As I was now facing the wall, I couldn't see what Orem and I and Ipsum were doing. After a few seconds of silence, I heard some whispering coming from the couch. What are you talking about? I didn't want to be rude, but I was just curious about your whispers. He said, and I quote, This would be more interesting if it wasn't for those clothes Jason is wearing. Coming here was a very bad idea. <laughs> yes, yes it was. <laughs> Really? I'm just saying it would be hard to study an in insect if there was a piece of cloth draped over it. Wearing that much just seems odd to me. If humans wear clothes like this, it's only appropriate to depict them as such. And my scientific curiosity shall remain unsatisfied. Because Jason is not here to do that. We actually have a pretty big variety of vestments, I could tell you about it. Sounds good, but not right now. I have to finish this up first. Alright. So, Ipsum, you have... So, Ipsum, I've heard a lot about experiments and science now. But what do you actually do? I work in the facility as a biologist with a minor of physics. God fucking damn it, not again! In addition to the office, I also have my own setup here at home. I assure you, it's properly isolated from the rest of our apartment. It even has a fume hood to prevent accidents. But I only use it for the smallest of experiments, usually things unrelated to my job. Sounds interesting. Don't get him started, or we won't hear the end of it. Maybe if you'd like to talk about your hobby instead, Lorem. Isn't this already a hobby? I guess you could say so. I was talking about his other hobby though. Oh, that. I don't know, it's a little embarrassing to be honest. There's no need to be, embar be embarrassed about your hobbies. He likes flowers. Once he even made the crown out of daisies. Cutest thing in the world. <laughs> don't listen to him. As usual, he only tells half the story. What's the other half then? I have extensive love for botany. Botany. <laughs> ah, English is hard. Please forgive me. The friend he keeps in his room must be the happiest plant alive. I find gardening very like to be you I find gardening to be very likely. I find gardening to be very likely. I find gardening to be very relaxing. I find garden. <laughs> I find gardening to be very relax. I find gardening to be very relaxing, especially when the birds are singing in the morning. It's so nice to go out there with a nice cup of tea and work with the gardens of our apartment building. Listen, the hardest word today or in this week was. To speak fast, I find gardening to be very, very, like, very relaxing. Say it fast as hell, and uh, trying to keep it as optimistic as it sounds. I'm repeated like five times. And if you can, then it means I'm a fucking 
dumbass. <laughs> Which reminds me, Ipsum here has a quite an extensive tea collection. Although I'm not sure if he prefers the hoard tea or gadgets. It's a mystery! I heard there was a going to be a model of the Ixum sphere that can actually make tea. That's going to be ma that's going to be a must buy. Can it also make cups? Or are you supposed to sip it through the sphere itself? Don't be silly. You two sound just like an old couple. Couple? Us? Not really. We've known each other for a long time though, if that counts. I think it does. By the way, Ipsum, you're not from here, right? What is that supposed to mean? Well, you look nothing like any other dragon I've seen here so far. I suppose that's true for Lor Lorem as well. You're both pretty small. But you, Ipsum, also have hair. That's currently new. It's not as unusual as you think, but you're right. There aren't many of us in, the, in these parts. I imagine being smaller than the rest of the population would come with its own challenges. Is that that big of a deal? If something is unreachable for me, I can fly. This apartment was actually intended to house one dragon for a bigger size. That not only makes it fairly cheap, but it's also big enough for both of us. There's one thing I've been wondering. How do you even sit in one of those chairs? Wouldn't the backrest cause problems with your tails? I see what you mean. For me, it's never been a problem, because most chairs are bigger than I am. It's just a question of getting into the right position. However, this might be a different from those who, of us who mostly walk on four legs, but they usually don't use chairs like these at all. I've seen a few try, though. I suppose they want to imitate humans this way, even if they can't stand or walk like a human. They can try to sit like one. With varying results. Some I've seen looked really funny, trying to fit in chairs they are too big for or sitting in odd ways that clearly don't work with their anatomy. I see. Lorem, you asked me about breeding weapons last time, but I don't think you ever told me if you had one. Probably because it isn't worth mentioning. It may only be a very small flame, but it can get very hot. What about you, Ipsum? Yes, Ipsum, what about you? My breath weapon is elocution. What? My breath weapon is elocution, since words are more powerful than anything else. <laughs> Same as Maiden. Alright, I'm done with this one. You can turn around. <laughs> really? But staring at the wall was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make one more. Maybe something dynamic. How, dy how dynamic are we talking about? Something that isn't static like the reference model I just did. You can strike a pose. Something that's just you. Alright. What kind of pose should I go for? A normal pose, a thoughtful pose, a swimwear pose. <laughs> a swimmer pose. <laughs> A normal pose. Alright, what about this? Works for me. By the way, did you get the groceries when you came home from work? Yes, just as usual. Are you sure? Are you too sure you're not in, in a relationship? <laughs> I certainly am. Actually, Ipsum is deeply in love with his own laboratory. Oh, really? I'm not even going to deny that. When I'm not working on something at the office, I do so here. What about the current currently working on? What are you currently working on? I've been working into the physics of teleportation. You're talking about the portal, right? Well, I don't have permission to even approach the portal, so I have to resort to a theoretical discussion on its mechanics and make do with that what I can pull off in my home laboratory. Maybe I could tell you a few things. That wouldn't be necessary. I have already read all the available test reports. Okay. Are you aware that using the portal could be incredibly dangerous? I'm not sure about what you're talking about. 
When you don't have a complete understanding of what a portal actually does and what it means for a world at large, in order for a portal to function, a natural wormhole is required. It is trapped and becomes the portal's entry. The portal manipulates the wormhole's exit. This way, something can be sent to whichever destination is chosen. Now, there is a theory about the purpose of the natural wormholes in the universe. It states that they act as the support pillars of the space-time continuum. How so? Uh, how should I explain this? I think the video game analogy worked pretty well. Sure, in a video game, what happens when you meet the edge of a map? You hit a wall? That happens in some games, but in others, you appear on the opposite side. Right. How does this happen? If our world was a perfect sphere, someone could just keep flying in the same direction and eventually they would end up at the starting point again. Sure. This is just a result of physics. In the abstraction of a video game, however, it doesn't work like that. They don't try to replicate a spherical world, but use a 2D plane instead. This is getting confusing. Imagine a piece of pa imagine a piece of paper with a world map printed on it. Right. Well, it shows the entirely well, it shows the entirety of the world. It's still just a simple flat piece of paper, rather than a sphere, right? Sure. Let us assume that in a game, our world map looks like that. Now, what happens when we approach the edge and walk over it is what we are teleported to the opposite side. Okay, wait, did I, see, did I read it right? Now, what happens when we approach the edge and walk over it is what that we are teleported to the opposite side. Okay, I did it right. This doesn't actually make the game world a sphere, but rather a torus. A torus. You know, like a donut. If that's a comparison you want to make. Okay. Now, things are going to get really complicated. Are you familiar with the many worlds interpretations of quantum mechanics? Let's say I'm not. It states that every single time a choice is made by an actor that possesses free will, the universe splits off into different branches. It means that for every choice you have made, there exists a branch of the universe where you made a different decision. I see. Wait, whoa, <laughs> I'm mind blown. Does that mean this is quantum physics? Like this is these are different realities. Like what I what I chose to say. What? <laughs> no, we can't communicate with these other branches in any way. You don't know what would happen if you had made a different decision just this morning. You can make an educated guess, but only person who truly knows what would happen is that alternate you who has made that decision and is living in its consequences. That is, unless we could communicate with those other branches. However, there is a barrier that prevents us from doing that. This barrier is made up from wormholes. How does that work? It is very similar to the Taurus world model that is used in the games. As we approach the edge of our own world, the barrier caused us to end up on the other side of the instead. Does that mean we get teleported to the other side like in video games? Not necessarily. It would be just a correct to assume that our universe is shaped like a torus. So, so which is it then? Do we get teleported or not? That depends on how you look at the wormhole's function. Imagine this sheet of paper is entirely of our world. He took a sheet of paper from Lorem's stack and showed it to me, marking a spot near the edge with a pen. And this is where you live. Unfortunately, your workplace is here, on the other side. He drew an X close to the right edge of the paper. If the world was flat, this would be very unfortunate. However, however if the world was Taurus, the left and right edges would be connected. You just take the shorter route to work by going over the edge. Now, let's say that this is only possible because wormholes connect these two edges together. If you happen to be right at the very edge and look beyond, everything would look perfectly fine to you. 
Given these wormholes stay in their place, you would never know that the world is actually flat and that you can only travel to the other side because the wormholes connect the edges. You would think that the world is a torus. Right. However, that if the wormhole don't actually bring... This is getting complicated my brain is starting to shizzle, fizzle, I don't know what is the right word. Like, melting. However, what if the wormholes don't actually bring you to the other side by teleporting you, but instead you bend the paper into the torus shape and hold it, its edges together? If these wormholes failed or were displaced, the paper would unfold, throwing the world into disarray. That's what the wormholes and the barrier actually do. They are what hold everything to together. together. Ah, my, it's getting late, it's almost 8. And my brain is shit. So they're actually more like glue. If it wasn't for them, the overall construct would collapse on itself. What construct? The entirety of space time. Now, if these theories are true, what would mean using a portal that damages the barrier? Each time a portal is activated, the wormhole used for the teleportation is displaced, leaving a small gap where it used to be. Do this too often, then the overall system will destabilize eventually. Alright, maybe you shouldn't talk about your theories about how the world is going to end. Nothing is going to happen because the portal was used a few times. I just hope humanity is aware of its implications. Maybe we can collaborate. I certainly hope so. The research seems to know what they are doing. Researchers, ah! Yeah, you researchers seem to know what they are doing. I just wish I could be part of it. With everything that's going on, the future looks incredibly exciting. What do you think is going to happen, Nipso? Now you'll get him started. Don't say I didn't warn you. The knowledge contained within your PDAs could propel innovation forward by unseen lengths. Meaning a lot more experiments for you to do. Which could be terribly exciting. Personally, I'm more interested in social implications. What do you mean? I don't expect there to just be a back and forth of ambassadors forever. Are you talking about colonies? Oh, I bet Lauren would just jump at the opportunity to live in the human world. I'm not sure if that would be a good idea. Why not? Obviously, such an endeavor would need a lot of preparation. We would need to learn about their culture and adjust appropriately. I'd expect we'd send an ambassador over there long before that would, uh, will happen though. We hardly know anything about their world. Anything's still up in the air as far as diplomatic relations go. We have no idea what the situation could be in just a week. Yes, and it's all so incredibly exciting. Don't get too excited though, or else you're going to ruin your drawing. It's almost done anyway. Here, what do you think? Lauren landed over, holding up the paper to Ipsum. Ipsum looked at the paper closely, his gaze shifting back and forth between me and the paper several times. After a few seconds, he seemed to be finished with his evaluation. As a scientist, my professional opinion is that this part looks a little long. He pointed this sharp claw at the part of the paper Lorem was holding. Are you sure? Let me see. If I wasn't sure, I wouldn't have said it. I think you're right. That I am. Lorem reached for his eraser, purging a few lines from the paper before he switched to his pen again. And it's done. See, what would you ever do without me? I don't think I'd hear as many explosions in the middle of the night. You were happy about it when you forgot to set your alarm that one time. Huh. Suddenly the sound of an alarm respond resounded throughout the room. Oh, my experiment is done. No way, two hours are gone. And there he goes. Charming fellow, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. 
He certainly keeps things interesting around here, and he's a good art critic. I can imagine. Anyway, looks like we're done here. Phew, it feels so good being able to move again. Would you like to stay for dinner? It'd be the least I can do to compensate for your lost afternoon. Let me see, what time it is? It's getting late and I probably shouldn't stay out this long. Looks like I have to decline for now. I see. Well, I gotta do something for you at least. Don't worry about it, maybe some other time. If you say so. Thanks for doing this, at any rate. It's been a huge help. Yeah, I know. Don't worry about it, really. Alright. I should really get going now. Sure. Take care. <laughs> Chapter 4, Loss. And there's Maverick. And in the background there's another... Oh no. You know, in the background there was someone standing there. It looked like... Uh, it looked like a fucking dinosaur. I don't know what it was. It was like... It looked like... Uh, it looked like... A, what was the... What was the name? The police one that I met the first time. The, the one with the hat. I woke... Uh, he looked like... He looked, the, there was a dragon that looked like him, and I don't know what... Ah, oh, fuck it. I awoke with my eyes fixed on the ceiling wallpaper. A sense of dread lingered from a nightmare I no longer remember. How many more times would I see this apartment before I turned to my own world? Or before something happened to me? Oh, is this foreshadowing? I got really... F I got ready for the day and tried to shake off those thoughts. Yeah, here he is, Sebastian. Hey, Jason. And right on the minute. You show up at this time every day. Like clockwork. Clocks are reliable. And reliable is good on this line of work. I've got something for you. An envelope from the facility. Oh, these are the results. Oh, these are the results from the test Sandra ran on my blood. She must have sent this before she was... No, it's no use thinking about that now. Maybe the test results will, ab will be able to help us. Let's see. Remarkable similarities in genetic makeup, particularly the brain structure. Oh, I suppose this isn't the only reason you're here. The chief will explain everything once we get there. Let's not keep him waiting, shall we? Is this another crime? I'm gonna end this soon. Yeah, it is crime. Oh no. Let me check something quickly. Wait. Status. It looks like nobody... Yay! I got these two up. We arrived at a place that would look like an ordinary house had it not been for its extraordinary size. It reminded me of... It reminded me more of a hostel than a family house home. Wait. Okay, the status is still good. Jeff. There you are. Wait, weren't you supposed to be with Emera? Luckily, she doesn't work every day of the week. I see. Anyway, we're nearly done here, so I'll keep it short. Reza broke into the hatchery. There is another murder victim, an employee of the hatchery who was on night duty. Her body was found quite away from here. Hi Crusader! There's evidence of a struggle, but she covered a lot of distance before it was ultimately over. Loud bangs were heard from the area her body was found, and she had numerous wounds consistent with both her wounds of the previous victims and that other person he was. He has. Shit. I should learn how to read. By this point, news of another corpse didn't have the same impact anymore. She was just another one of she was just another one of Reza's faceless victims. A hatchery? Is that what this building is? Well, not only. It's a council-owned building, 
And they like keeping everything related to the sector, unless the same roof, under the same roof. So besides the hatchery, there's also an orphanage and a family clinic inside. There are also offices related to the administration of those services. Is that a dean? Or is that the random victim? That reminds me of the production facility. It should. They have a similar management structure. Can we get back to the case? Uh, sorry for the interruption, chief. Wait a minute. If an orphanage is in there, too. There are no other casualties, but Reza got something else when he broke in. A generator, as well as a few eggs. Luckily, the power was restored before anything happened to all the other eggs left inside. But needless to say, the parents of the stolen eggs are now going to be... Are not going to be happy. Why would he steal eggs in the first place? Maybe you can tell us. That's why you're here, after all. I don't know. I have no idea what he would even do with them. Maybe he wants to use them... Maybe he wants to use them as a bargaining chip. After all, he still has to make his escape. And the portal is still broken. Do you think he wants to exchange them for a safe passage through the portal? Maybe. It's still broken though, so I'm not sure if that would be much help. Maybe he has the part needed to repair it. And now has everything he needs to escape. He could trade the eggs for the safe passage, fix the portal and leave. That's not the only possibility. He may not be the one who broke the portal. Maybe he thinks you've internationally sabotaged it so he can't leave. And he feels he needs the eggs as bargaining chip to get your you to repair it. If he just wanted to leave, I feel like he could have done that already. It doesn't even matter who sabotaged the portal. We only know that Reza's actions are becoming more and more disparate. He kidnapped defenseless eggs and even used the human weapon. Something's clearly going on with him. Maybe it, maybe it means that he'll slip up soon. Who knows, maybe he already has. In any case, we're done here. Let's head back to the department and decide what to do next. Hopefully, some of the test results will tell us something. Wait, I just remembered there was this, in the past one, there was the... As a brief walk, we were in Bryce's office again. Initial test results had already come in, but didn't reveal any sig insightful or new information. Wait. I just realized uh, in the previous one, I had. I could have chosen two things. Either. Like, there were two things. There was. At the start, like, chapter 3, right? There were the, these two cards. There was. Uh, Loram and Adin. I chose Remy and Loram. And now it's Maverick. So, I guess I could go and talk with Maverick. So, what do we do now? Go over the timeline again? Not yet. There are a few things I'd like to take care of first. What do you have in mind? Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Come in. Maverick! Maverick, what are you doing here? Chief, can I talk to you? Alone. We're quite busy here, Maverick. What is this about? Reza. Well, you're looking at Reza's task force, so if you have anything to say, you can say it in front of all of us. I see. I think I know where Reza is. You know where Reza is at this very moment. I have a good reason to believe that I have located his hideout. He could still be there, or he might already moved on. Damn, Maverick. Tell me everything. I've been tracking him for a while now. When he was at the portal a few days ago, I nearly got him and managed to follow him for a while before I lost him. Based on that, where he where he's been and where his victims have been found, I could triangulate his whereabouts. 
He has to live somewhere, right? He needs a base to hide the generators and everything he has stolen. Bryce cleared the clutter on a table and smoothed out a map on, of the town on its surface. It already had a few locations related to the case marked on it. Show it to me. Prior victims were found here. And here. Today's was here. She was following him. Likely because she wanted to save the eggs he stole. Which is... This is the path he took from the portal when I followed him a few days ago. So we have established this in his area of operation. Extrapolate it and we can narrow it down to this. Now, where could he be hiding in this area? He's certainly not within the village borders. So unless he decided to live in the wilderness or in a hole in the ground, the only option is here. The abandoned farm. When did you figure all of this out? Just a few minutes ago. When I did, I immediately came here. Damn it, Maverick. This might be it. Should we send an observation team? As if we had one to spare. Heck, we're going there right now. What about you, Maverick? I'm still on sick leave, remember? Besides, if I saw Reza right now, I'd probably do something I shouldn't. How about you, Jason? Is this going to be dangerous? Reza probably won't harm you, as you're the only one he could possibly consider an ally. Good point. If anything, you... If anything, with you there, we might be able to convince him to give up. Or we could act like we intend to trade you for the eggs. If he tries to use them as a bargaining chip. You're not really going to use me as a ransom, right? We'll see about that. I suppose if it's necessary, I'll have to play along. I've got your back. If there's one thing we could do to make this whole situation even worse, it would be messing up with you. Have we have the elements of surprise if we walk into the base right now, but we risk Reza lashing out with his weapon. If we want, if we want to resolve this peacefully, observation is probably the way to go. I guess we won't need Jason there for that though. True enough. Hello Jason, you stay here and wait for further instructions. We may need you at the moment no moment's notice. Don't do anything without us telling you to. Understand? Okay. Alright then. Let's go, Sebastian. After you, Chief. And Maverick. Good job. Thanks, Chief. Shortly after they vanished, Maverick also turned to leave. Then I had to wait. Bryce and Sebastian were observing the farm now, and if anything new happened, I would be there first to know. Now let me check if there's going to be something new, and if there's not going to be anything, then I'm going to stop it here. I spent some time looking around Bryce's office, studying all the material he had gathered about the case, though there wasn't any information that I didn't already know. After a few hours, the telephone in the office rang, and not sure whether the call was intended for me or Bryce, I picked up. Jason? Yes? I think you need to come here. I'll give you the directions. No problem. There you are. So, what happened? A whole lot of nothing. There was no movement to or from the building in the time we've been watching. He usually operates during the night, so maybe he's just asleep. In that case, it would be best for us to go in before he has a chance to make his escape. Or maybe he's not even in there anymore. He could have seen us and slipped away unnoticed, with plenty of time to destroy the evidence while we've been waiting here. You're right. Either he's still inside, or he's already gone and not coming back. Let's go in. What should I do? You're coming with me, Sebastian. You walk around and watch the back and the building, just in case he tries to escape. I'm on it, Chief. I go in and you stay here, alright? 
What am I even here for, then? Your insurance. If Reza tries to flee and sees you, it might throw him off. You might be able to stop him. Or if he gets into a standoff, I can tell him you're here as well. I just don't want you to come inside when it could become dangerous. You know what? I'm gonna save it here and I'm gonna leave it now. I know I'm leaving it on a cliffhanger, but at the same time I have to leave because soon enough school's gonna be locked down, like closed. Not like locked down, locked down, but like locked down as in, okay, now it's enough for today. Uh, come back tomorrow. So yeah. An hour and 46 minutes of recording. Fun! So yeah. Now, I know I'm leaving this on a cliffhanger, but I just have to go. So yeah, I'm gonna go. Now, uh, a complete rundown on what happened in this episode. Uh, we... I actually can't remember. I remember that we talked with Remy, we talked with Lorem, then... There was this, but what was before? Huh. Oh yeah, before then it was like a, a Reza or someone in the mask just said, uh, okay, Maverick was already there, and I'll just fuck off. So yeah, that's just the rundown of the whole story that happened. Now, uh, let's quit. Alright, so this was the end. This is gonna be the end of Angels and Scaly Wings for today. Uh, so this was actually pretty fun. I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And if you did, then drop a like or dislike or you know do whatever you want because if you're happy, I'm happy. So yeah, I'm just gonna go now because school's about to get locked and closed and everything, and I'm really getting starting to get hungry. So yeah, I'm gonna see you all guys later. Oh, and remember, if your day was shit, don't worry. It's not the last day on the earth.